Hi guys, and in today's video, we're going to be doing the physics GCSE required practical on acceleration. This video isn't just for you people doing GCSEs. It's also for younger people or very, very old. Dad, think fast. Ah, you caught it. <laughs> He's eating it. So if you're a parent or a grandparent, you might want to do this with your kids or grandkids. I know we had a lot of fun doing this experiment. In this experiment, we're going to be accelerating a vehicle and investigating Isaac Newton's second law of motion. You can do this experiment using just a simple stopwatch. We use the one on our smartphone. If you're at school, you'll probably be using a data logger and a light gate, which is very expensive. Light gates can be over a hundred pounds. But don't worry, we've got you covered. We've made a homemade light gate for about five pounds. We're going to explain the full experiment to you guys and also show you guys how to set it up with items you'll just have lying around your house. And if you're missing anything you need, then I'm sure you'll be able to improvise. We'll carry out the experiment and show you how to make the measurements but we'll skip ahead anything repetitive just so this video doesn't get too long we'll put our results in a spreadsheet which will give us a handy graph and for the spreadsheet we're going to use google sheets which is free and also works in a web browser which means we can share it with you guys we'll analyze the results and go through parts of the experiment that we found a little bit challenging to understand and absorb if we find it challenging then maybe other people will find our explanation useful as my brother mentioned earlier, we built our own light gate. To make that, we bought a Raspberry Pi Pico, usually about £3, and some sensors, about £2.60, and we displayed our results on a SSD screen. If you're not doing GCSEs, then you don't need to understand every bit of this video. So for example, you don't need to know how to rearrange an equation. You can just set the experiment going and res record your results in the spreadsheet. So without any further ado, let's beg, borrow and steal what we need for the experiment. Let's go into town and see what we can get. We found these for only a pound, so these will be really good. Now we've got our toy car, it's time to find a container to glue onto here that is big enough to fit all our equipment in. Oh look, this cream cheese container looks like it will fit really well. Oh that does fit. Right, we'll use this. Oh, it's not even been opened. We've got a lot of cream cheese to get through. It's nice and clean, I'll just dry this and we'll be ready to use it. We need to glue on a platform to our toy car. I'm gonna reuse our, one of our old projects. This surface um, didn't stick very well, so we just flipped it over. And this is pretty sturdy. Um, I've also cut out and this um, 35 mil here. 35 mil here and it doesn't really matter what this gap is here but we've done 35 mil if you're using a stopwatch and not our homemade light gate then you don't really need this bit of card and you can clip this on here um like this and i can remove it um and put different ones on if this breaks or i want to try a different measurement for the pulley i just got a lego wheel here and if you take the tire off you've got a nice little groove here as you can see here that should keep the string in nicely as we mentioned earlier, you can improvise and use other household items. For example, for the vehicle, you could use a Lego car or a roller skate. For the pulley, you could use a cotton reel and a pencil. And shortly, we make a crash barrier using a fitness band, and you could just use a chain of elastic bands. If you do have any great ideas of materials or alternatives, then please do leave them in the comment section down below, because that will really help everyone out, and we'll be really interested to hear what everyone comes up with. I'm just roughing it up um, to get make a better surface for the glue to stick to. Now I'm just going to glue this onto here, like that. We've not got one of those nifty weight hangers, but we do have a bucket and a box. We're probably going to go with this box. Hiya, can we borrow this for your, our physics experiment? Okay. Thank you very much. There you go. I'm just going to put one of these fitness bands over here. We're just going to test if our amazing crash barrier works. Looks pretty good. Um, just for curiosity and a bit of fun, we've put an accelerometer in our cart here, which will measure the acceleration and just print a few values on the screen. But it's just a bit of fun. We're not going to be relying on this, um, but just don't let that distract you. Let me take you through how we're measuring the acceleration. This provides the force, which we can change by adding mass. You'll also need a start and finish line and you'll need to measure it. Um, ours is 40 centimetres or 0.4 metres from the start to finish and we've marked those with 
gaffer tape. Um, you'll need to make a tiny tweak to the spreadsheet if your distance isn't 40 centimetres, which is absolutely fine, and we'll show you how to do that later. The cart is held as close as possible to this start line here, and the velocity is zero because I'm holding it. We've got a typical smartphone here, um, recording in slow-mo, and we've also got a stopwatch. This can be replaced with just a simple stopwatch that you start when you release the cart and stop when it passes the finish line. However, we think using the slow-mo cam, we can be a little bit more accurate. So I'll say three, two, one, and then release the cart. And at the same time, my brother or sister will start the stopwatch and we'll do that somewhat and we'll do that simultaneously. Because we know the distance from the start line to the finish line, and we know the time it took to get there, um, and most importantly, we know the, the initial velocity is zero because we're holding the cart still at the beginning, um, we can work out the acceleration. We'll explain that formula shortly. We've also got this homemade light gate here, which will give us the acceleration as well. Um, you only need one of these methods, you don't need both. We've just got them both to show you guys a few options. And we've also got a video showing you guys how to make these light gates. They're expensive to buy, but very cheap to make. So how does the light gate work? Well, there's an infrared beam being emitted here and received down here. And we can detect when that is interrupted or broken and then when it's back to normal. So when the cart is released, the beam will be broken here and then it will be resolved here. And our code will measure the time that that took and also, because we know the distance, so that's 35 millimetres here, we'll use the formula distance divided by time, and we work, can work out the velocity. We don't need to see it, but that first velocity is on the screen. Same thing again for this second 35 millimetre bit of card here, so we'll go through. Um, and from those measurements, it can calculate the velocity, and it'll display it on this screen here as vel2. And now, using those two velocities, we can take velocity 1 from velocity 2 to get the change of velocity. And acceleration is equal to the change of velocity divided by the time that took. And our code actually knows the time that that took. So using that data, our code can carry out that formula and calculate the acceleration. And that can be displayed on this little screen down here. Um, the bottom value down there. ACC is the acceleration. We'll do one experiment where we change the force, another experiment where we change the mass. And for every alteration we make to the values, we will take three, three readings and we'll find the average. And this spreadsheet will do all the calculations for us and present them on a nice graph here as well. And if you want to know how we did the spreadsheet, we have a video on that as well. We're now going to explain the experiment. There's a little mistake here, which I will fix, but in the F equals MA equation, I absentmindedly used capitals for M and A when they should be lowercase. We left it in because we thought it might help you guys learn from my mistakes. We're gonna explore Newton's second law. <laughs> um, Sir Isaac Newton, um, extremely smart guy. He was mainly known for his maths and science and his influence on the scientific revolution. Um, and his mum actually wanted him to be a farmer, um, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, and he was actually born on Christmas Day, um, but then when the Georgian calendar got converted to the one we use today, I think about 11, 11, 11 more days were added, so now his birthday's on the 4th of January. I've changed the capital um, M and A to a lowercase letters, that was my mistake. So Newton's second law can be represented by the formula F equals M A. F is force, measured in Newtons. An example of a contact force would be me pushing my sister and an example of a non-contact force could be magnetism or gravity. M stands for mass, which is measured in kilograms. Um, mass is just related to the amount of matter an object contains. So if you're floating around in space, people often say that you're weightless, but you're still going to have the same mass as if you were on Earth. My sister is probably about 25 kilograms, and she's going to be 25 kilograms wherever she is in the universe. You may hear velocity being mentioned quite a lot in this video. Um, if you don't know what that is, you can just think of it as speed, but with speed we don't care about what direction it's going in, whereas with velocity we care about the speed and the direction. A is the acceleration, which is measured in metres per second squared. Acceleration is just the change of velocity over a certain period of time. So speeding up or slowing down? And this equation is going to be more useful if we rearrange it so that A is the subject. We can divide by the mass, divided by the mass equals acceleration. And then we'll just swap this around. So acceleration is force divided by mass. 
So the first part of Isaac Newton's second law says that the acceleration of an object is proportional to the resulting force. So if we double the force, the acceleration doubles. And if the force gets 10 times bigger, the acceleration gets 10 times bigger. So let's put some values in, so I'm gonna rub this out. So let's say the force is 10 newtons divided by five kilograms. 10 divided by five is two. So in this case, the acceleration is two meters per second squared. Let's say we double the force. So that means we've got 20 newtons divided by five kilograms. Following Newton's second law, if we double the force, the acceleration should double. So 20 divided by five is four and four is double two. So the acceleration has doubled as well. The next part of Newton's second law says that the acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass. So if the mass doubled, the opposite would happen to the acceleration. So if the mass doubled, the acceleration would half. And if the mass was made 10 times bigger, the acceleration would be made 10 times smaller. So let's follow on from our calculations before. Um, instead of changing the force, we're going to change the mass. Let's say we double the mass, so we'll have 10 kilograms. 20 divided by 10 is 2. We get an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. So we've doubled the mass, so according to Newton's second law, the acceleration should half. So we've got an acceleration of 4 meters per second, which means we should have got 2 meters per second. And we did. And this is what we're going to be doing in our experiment. We're going to be proving Newton's second law through experimentation. First, we're going to see how changing the force affects the acceleration. We'll keep the mass the same throughout the first experiment. Now, where is our force going to come from? Well, we're going to use gravity. So we've got our setup here. We've got our cart, our string, our pulley and our box. And when we release our box, it's going to apply a force to our cart, pulling it along the table. And then we'll measure the acceleration of our cart. To change the force, we take a mass from our cart and add it to our box. And then we repeat the whole experiment again. So we release our box, it will pull our cart along the table and we'll measure the acceleration of it. Then we'll just keep transferring masses from our cart to our box, which is going to increase the force pulling our cart along the table. For me, I thought it was a bit strange that the masses had to be from our cart. We couldn't add them externally into our experiment. Um, some of you may get this why this works straight away, but if you don't, then stick around to the end of this video where I'll explain in detail why this is the case. In experiment one, we're keeping the mass the same and changing the force. In experiment two, we're keeping the force the same and changing the mass. And this one is even easier. So for the force, we'll just pick a certain mass to put in this box, keep it the same the whole time. So that means the force will always be the same here and we'll never change it. What we will change is the mass. And to do that, we'll just add random object, objects with different masses into our cart. Let's take some measurements and get started with experiment one. Don't worry if you don't have a spreadsheet, this particular one will be linked in the description box down below for everyone to use. And if you want to make your own one, then we've got a video on spreadsheets, so if you're interested, do check that out. Or you could choose the old-fashioned method of just writing out a table on some paper. First thing we need to fill in is this box here, which is the distance from your start line to the finish line. Mine is 0.4 metres, but of course, if yours is different, then change it to your specific value. I've got eight bottle caps here, which I've just weighted down to 10 grams each with some coins and blue tack. These are going to be the masses that we're going to add to our experiment to change the force or the mass. Before we get started, we need to measure the mass of this car. Now we need to measure the mass of the box. And that's about 1.86 grams. My sister's just written these results on the board pair. Using those measurements, it's time to fill out the spreadsheet. So the first column is the mass of the system. And the mass of the system is the mass of the box, the cart, and all the masses that are inside of the cart. We're going to have eight of these masses, and each one is 10 grams. So if we do eight times 10, eight times 10 that gives us 80 grams. So that's the mass of all of these masses. And now we just simply have to add them all up. And you can do this on a calculator. I'm just going to do it here and we get 296.15 grams. On the spreadsheet, we need this in kilograms, um, but this is in grams. So to convert from grams to kilograms, we divide by 1,000. There are many ways of dividing by 1,000, using a calculator as one of them, but I'm just gonna move this decimal point three places to the left. So you can go one, two, three, and I'll put the naught here, which means we've got an answer of 0.29615 kilograms. 
And I'm just going to use the first three um, digits after the decimal point, so I'm going to round it to three decimal places. So, just take that off. And we've got 0 0.296 kilograms. So I've just put that in our spreadsheet here. Finally, we need the mass of the box, which, if you remember earlier, we measured as 9.87 grams. And we need that in kilograms, if you remember from earlier, to convert from grams to kilograms, we divide by 1,000. So we'll put that in our spreadsheet. And using the mass of the box, our spreadsheet really handily works out the force that's going to be applied when we release the box. Now the spreadsheet's done, let's get on with the experiment. But I'm going to release the cat and I'm going to press the timer at the same time. So okay. just make sure it's all lined up. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, go. So the acceleration read by my light gate, um, I put here. This is our first try, and I got 0 0.0557. And in this box here, we put the time that my trolley passed the finish line. So I'm going to pull up our recording here. And you can see the yellow card goes to pass the finish line just here. And we can see on the stopwatch that's 3.72 seconds. So I've just put that in our spreadsheet here. This value isn't an acceleration, um, you can see it's a time. However, when we press enter, you can see that our spreadsheet works out the acceleration and displays it here. You may be wondering how can you work out the acceleration using just a stopwatch? And I will show you how we do that at the end of this video, um, but let's not get ourselves distracted just now. Then in the yellow, we've got the theoretical acceleration. And so that's in a perfect world, what acceleration should we be getting? And you can see that these two averages broadly agree, um, but they are quite far off the theoretical acceleration. Um, but we'll keep going, filling out these results and see what happens. By the way, if you are using our spreadsheet, you'll likely be only using one of these two methods. So if you're only using the light gate, you need to fill out this part of the spreadsheet. And if you're just using a stopwatch, you just need to fill out this part. So we repeated the experiment and our light gate gave us an acceleration of 0 0.0805 and a time of 2.86 seconds. On the third try we got an acceleration of 0 0.0785 and a time of 3.11 seconds. And you can see our average acceleration measured by our light gate here and our average time here. And using this average, our spreadsheet has worked out the average acceleration. We finished doing our first three results with our first force. Now we're going to change by the force by transferring 10 grams into from our cart into, into our little box here. Okay. And we'll run the experiment again. So I'm just going to press record on my slow-mo camera. Make sure everything's resetted. Um, yep, it's all reset. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so here I've read the acceleration 0.328, so I'll put that in our spreadsheet. On the slow motion, we were just re replaying the video and we're going to see at what time, I don't know if you can see it very well, but what time the yellow card passes, passes our line and we're going to read what the stopwatch is saying. Um, 1.51. Let's get that result recorded in our spreadsheet. We're going to have to make a little alteration to one of the measurements. The mass of the system is going to stay the same because we're not removing anything from the experiment. And in fact, the mass of the system is going to stay the same throughout the full experiment. That's never going to change. But the mass of the box has changed because we transferred one of these masses off the cart and into our box. So our box has increased by 10 grams. So the new mass of our box is going to be 9.87 add 10, which equals 19.87 grams. Now what we have to do is convert that to kilograms and we can put that in our spreadsheet. So I've put a cheeky little grams to kilograms converter in our spreadsheet, which I'll show you now. And here is that grams to kilograms converter. So the new mass of our box was 19.87 grams. And if we press enter, it's converted it to kilograms for us. So we'll just pop that into our spreadsheet. And there we go. So at the light gate, I got 0.328. And then the time was 1.51. Again, we repeated this. And you can see me putting in our results here. We've done three for the first force, three for the second force. And now it's time for the third force. So we're just okay. going to transfer, transfer our 10 kilogram weight. 10 gram weight from here to the box. Okay, now yeah. we're going to take three measurements. You've already seen us 
conducting the Three, experiment and two, we've shown you how to one, do it. Go. So to avoid wasting any time, we're going to fast forward to filling out the spreadsheet so you guys can I see the graph develop and then analysing our results. Now to analyse our results. So you can see the acceleration of the light gate represented in blue and the acceleration of the stopwatch represented in, in red. They roughly agree, especially at the beginning. So this is suggesting that the acceleration that we've measured is pretty accurate and is probably the real acceleration of the cut. Um, the acceleration measured using the stopwatch, it goes a little bit wonky here. It, it differs from the acceleration of the light gate. This could be due to human error because the timings do get pretty close together around this region. However, both of these results are quite far off the theoretical acceleration, which is represented in yellow here. And I think one factor that could be causing this is that um, there will be some form of friction involved. I'm going to make some adjustments to our experiment so that we just need to give it the tiniest of nudges and then it should roll without stopping. So we're going to put some WD-40 on our makeshift pulley and the wheels to reduce friction and then we're also going to tilt the table ever so slightly. As you can see the table's only been tilted one degree and that's just to counteract friction and um, this is what works for our experiment any more than this then we'll be introducing acceleration from the tilt which is not what we want. We just want to counteract the friction. Then we'll repeat the full experiment again and come back to you with the results and hopefully they'll be a little bit closer to the theoretical acceleration. I'll show you a few clips of my sister and I carrying out the experiment but you've already seen me do it so we'll cut shortly I'm to the ready. results. Three, two, one, go. We finished the experiment and we've got our results up here and already they're looking a lot better. And um, if we didn't have this last measurement here, these would be perfect. Because remember, if we double the force, the acceleration should double. And that's what's happening here. So at 0.2 newtons, the acceleration using the stopwatch is 0.58. So if we doubled the force at 0.4, we should get double this, which is about 1.2. And we do get about 1.2 here. And also, if we find the gradient of these lines, we should get the mass of the system. So let's just start with... The gradient of the stopwatch so we can just go equals and then this cool function slope which will give us the gradient or the slope so along the bottom we've got the force so i'll just take from here to here and then we need the acceleration so this is the acceleration of the stopwatch so we'll take these values press enter and we get 0.337 which is pretty close to 0.296 it's not exact but it is very close we're doing the same thing here for the gradient of the light gate represented on the graph in blue. The x-axis is the force. And this time we're taking the acceleration measured by the light gate. Enter. And we get 0.297. Oh, that is so close to 0.296. And you can see on the graph that the blue line is very, very close to the theoretical acceleration. The last measurement um, measured by the light gate in blue um, should never be faster than the theoretical acceleration but it is, which is a little bit annoying, and it should be a lot closer to the acceleration measured using the stopwatch. So maybe the yellow card just got nudged and was slanted, and it is tempting to take this um, result out, but, you know, things aren't perfect, and this is just what happened. But overall, it looks like we got the results that many other people, when they carried out this experiment correctly, will have gotten, um, which shows that Newton's second law is correct. Well, at least the part that says that the force is proportional to the acceleration. Now we'll test the next part, um, which sees how the mass affects the acceleration. Let's do that now. Instead of seeing how the force um, pulling down on our cart affects the acceleration, we're going to see how the mass of the cart affects the acceleration. So we'll apply the same force in this box, but keep adding masses to our cart and see how that affects the acceleration. I've collected a few household items that we're going to use as the masses and we also have a new spreadsheet up here um, where we're going to record our results. Before we get on we need to do a few measurements so we're going to do that now. I'm going to measure the mass of the box which was 40 grams so we will put this in our grams to kilograms converter just here and that's given us 0.04 kilograms so we'll put that in here. And the mass of the box is going to stay the same because remember we want to apply the same force the whole time. So we'll do this. And really usefully using that information, our spreadsheet has worked out the force that will be pulling our cart along the table. We also need the mass of the system. So that's the mass of the cart and the box. And that was about 152.86 grams. So put that in our grams to kilograms converter, converted it to kilograms, and then we'll just put that value in the mass of the system. And remember, this is including all the masses inside of the box. 
and every time we add a mass to the cart we're going to measure that mass on the scales and add it to the mass of the system. So these values will be increasing. I'm going to start with nothing in the cart. Three, two, one, go. The acceleration using the light gate was 2.27 so I put that in my spreadsheet and the time the yellow card passed the finish line was 0.61 seconds. I've repeated that two more times, now it's time to change the mass of the cart. The first random item I'm going to add to my cart to change the mass is this, and um, so I need to measure its mass, and that is 106.64 grams, to convert that value to kilograms, and then we can just add that to the mass of the system. So if we go into this formula bar up here, we'll do equals, then the mass of the system, add our mass, and there we go. We'll add this to the cart and do the experiment again. Three, two, one, go. Then I'm just going to put that in the spreadsheet and we repeat that two more times and you can just see me filling out the results here. Now to change the mass of the cart again, so I'm going to add this random item on again. 113.31. We'll add that to the current mass of the system. Then we'll put this in the box and we'll repeat the experiment again. Now to change the mass for the third time, so I'm going to add these batteries into the cart. 210.5 grams, so we'll convert that to kilograms and add that to the current mass of the system. So I'm going to put these in the cart and we'll repeat the experiment again. Time to add the final mass, um, so I've just got this random whiskey bottle that I found, about 127.73 grams, so we'll convert it to kilograms, add that to the current mass of the system on the spreadsheet, add this last item into the box and repeat the experiment again. Finished the experiment, now let's analyse the results. We do have the curve that we would expect for an inversely proportional results. Um, both the acceleration measured using the light gate and using the stopwatch, both are relatively close to the yellow line, which is a theoretical acceleration. So it's looking like our results are pretty accurate, which I'm really happy with. Um, we probably should have done more measurements, so used some smaller masses here and here. And if I could repeat the experiment, I would have included two or more extra data points to the data points we've already taken. Um, but overall, you can see that however many times bigger or smaller we make the mass, the opposite happens to the acceleration. So this proves that these results are inversely proportional. And Newton's full second law is correct, which is what we expected. We're about to explain some extra parts um, to the experiment that we would have wanted explaining to us when we did this experiment. Um, so feel free to stay, stick around, check those bits up. If you want to go now, that's fine. So please do like this video if you liked it and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, that would really help us out. Overall, I think the experiment went pretty well. It turned out a lot better than I expected it to. And we did have a lot of fun doing it as well. So I would really recommend you guys trying the experiment out yourselves. And if you do, do let us know how you get on. We really hope it does go well for you guys. And um, you know, let us know in the comment section down below. Our website should be coming out in the not too distant future. So there might be some forums and stuff on there. So, you know, let us know how it went on there as well. If you are going to stick around we're about to get on with the extra part so let's do that now. If you remember in the first experiment we wanted to keep the mass the same but change the force. We took the mass out of the cart, put it into the box, so the force of gravity acting on it would be added to the force on the pulley which would increase the force acting on the system. But why did the mass have to come from the trolley? Why couldn't we have added a mass from elsewhere and put it in the box? Here's our trolley and here's our box and I've just wrapped the string around a few times just to shorten it and the first important concept is that this box along with the trolley and all of its masses is all one vehicle. I think if this had wheels on it would be a little bit more obvious um, so I've just put these circular stickers on to look a little bit like wheels but... <laughs> now the mass of this vehicle is acted on by gravity but that force goes directly down into the table and has no effect on the force going in this direction. If we could find some way of applying a force in this direction then this vehicle would accelerate in that direction and we would be accelerating the mass of the box, the cart and everything inside of the cart. Then if we could start again we could double that force acting in this direction and take our next measurement of acceleration. If at any point we introduce the mass from elsewhere and put it on the box then I think we'd all cry foul and say hold on a minute we're not supposed to be changing the mass of the system in this experiment so I've got to take that off. 
Now we're back to the setup of the Atra experiment where the force is neatly created by part of our vehicle hanging off the edge of the table via a pulley. And remember this is still one vehicle even though part of it is hanging off the edge of the table. And the force due to gravity acting on the mass of the part of the vehicle that's hanging over the edge of the table is no longer counteracted by the table, it's counteracted by my hand holding the cart at the start line. And then when I let go, that force has accelerated the entire vehicle, so the cart with all the masses inside and the box. And then this light gate is detecting this yellow card here, but we may as well have just put the yellow card on the box and then put the light gate down here. And then if we did that, the light gate would measure the acceleration of the falling box, which is the same thing because it's the same vehicle. And remember, in this experiment, we want to change the force. And to change the force, we can take one of the masses out of the trolley, where the force of gravity acting on that mass is counteracted by the table, then transfer it to the box. So now that force is added to the force already being applied by this box, which accelerates the vehicle. So this box, the cart, the lot. And we haven't changed the mass of the full vehicle. Earlier, I did promise you guys that I'd show you how to work out the acceleration if you're using a stopwatch. S is the displacement, so the distance from the start line to the finish line. And the T's are time, and A is acceleration. U is the initial velocity, and we mentioned that the initial velocity is zero because our cart isn't moving. Zero times anything is zero, so this can be cancelled out. So the displacement is half a t squared. If we double this, we get 2s equals a t squared. Now we want to get a on its own as the subject, so we can just divide by t squared. So 2s divided by t squared equals a. I can just flip that around. So if we want to work out the acceleration of our cut, um, well, we know what S is, that's the distance from the start line to the finish line. And then we also know what T is, so that's what will be displayed on our stopwatch. So using those values, we can put them into this formula and work out the acceleration. We did have our accelerometer um, in the first experiment in our cart. You may have seen it didn't appear in the second experiment. That's just because it would have added an extra 10, 15 minutes to the video and it would have gotten way too long. So we just scrapped it. So that's why um, there was this mystery thing at the beginning and we didn't really talk about it that much. Just for completeness, here are some considerations, mistakes and errors, hazards and risks, and the independent and control variable. Pause the video if you're interested. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. I um, really hope we th you found those extra bits um, useful. Um, let us know if you did stick around to the end. So comment a green heart emoji so that we know who got to the end. Um, and yeah, please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye.